I want to see this. Hi, show. everyone. This is Rico Figliolini, a host of Peach Recorders Live. Glad that you're joining us, whether it's live on this feed with Facebook or you're joining us on our podcast or YouTube video. Um, I would appreciate if you follow us online. Certainly, if you like Facebook page for Peach Recorders Live, you get notification of our live feed. So that'd be great to do. Before we get to our, today's show, great guest. It's a follow-up to a cover story that we did an issue back about vibrant technology in the heart of Peachtree Corners. I just want to introduce our sponsor for the family podcast we do, which is Heartgrade Fiber. Heartgrade Fiber is a company that deals in fiber optics, cable, communications, IT management, bundle services throughout the Southeast. They're in our communities. They're doing great work in our communities too, especially now reaching out providing free internet services for a company, doubling bandwidths for existing customers. They're doing a lot of things out there to make teleworking way easier. So to find out more about them, check them out, heartgreatfiber.com. Appreciate their sponsorship. So now let's join with my co-host, Patrizia Winsper, who wrote the article on these technology companies. And today's guest, she's going to introduce them. I'm going to put them on screen right now. Patrizia, go ahead and introduce our guest today. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I, I have the sincere pleasure of introducing to you the CEO of Control Rad, Guillaume Bayard. Hi, Guillaume. Hi, everyone. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. How are you doing today, Guillaume? Doing fantastic. It's a beautiful day outside. Awesome. It's such a great time to do a podcast about some positive news and some great innovations that are taking place right here in Peachtree Corners. So I hope everyone has a chance to just settle down with us for a little bit and think happy thoughts and listen to some good news that's going on. Right, Rico? Yes, absolutely. We, um, our guest is dealing, is, is actually in the city of Peachtree Corners and he's at his office at Tech Park. Right, Gio? That's right. I'm, I mean, I'm here in Peachtree Corners at the office uh, on Scientific Drive. Absolutely. So we're today we're doing some testing inside the uh, our laboratory here in the office. So uh, we're here to uh, to uh, support and, and review the uh, the testing. For sure, you're doing this socially safe and all that. I, I imagine, right? I am. I did take off my uh, I-95 mask that I have with me here, but I took it off here for this interview. <laughs> Excellent. Good. Um, so let's let's get right down to it then. Why, why don't we ask? The Patricia, did you want to show the magazine? Go ahead. I just wanted to point out that this is a story that appeared on the cover of our February, March 2020 issue. And Control Rad is being featured today in this podcast. And of course, that's Guillaume Bayard, CEO. Now, if we're looking at the name of your company, Guillaume, Control Rad, let's think Control radiation that's so correct company has come up with a medical device that actually helps the medical professionals who are doing these procedures on a daily basis and protecting them or controlling that excess radiation that is unnecessary and that is currently inevitable without your device so let's talk about control rad's medical device and exactly how is it that you are performing these procedures, sparing both surgeons and patients the exposure to that unnecessary scatter radiation. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so you know, what people you know through this COVID-19 pandemic are now more appreciating than ever is that medical professionals put their, their lives at risk for treating patients. And um, our technology helps radically and dramatically reduce the life altering risks associated with radiation exposure to the medical staff. So as an example, when you're getting, let's say a stent deployed in your heart to open up a blockage, uh, a cardiologist will use a cath lab, which is a x-ray unit that continuously deploys x-ray to see inside your body to deploy that, that, that stent. The patient gets radiated one time, but the medical staff, the physician and the nurses and everybody else in the room will get radiated their entire lives as they do multiple of these procedures per day and throughout the year. Right. A typical cardiologist will get exposed the equivalent of 150,000 chest x-rays throughout their lifetime. So it's very similar to the NFL concussion story where 
we knew these risks were there for a long time. It took a couple key cases for that for this to surface as an issue. And we've deployed a technology to help reduce that risk. And the risks are, 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 are dramatic. There is two times the risk of, of left brain tumors. There's a 50% increase in incidence in cataracts. There's a 34% increase in stroke incidence when compared to other physicians that are not in the, in the x-ray room. So um, both patients and medical staff are, are, uh, get dramatic, uh, dramatically less radiation using our device. Um, and, and that's how, our de- and basically the way our device works is, I think to answer your question, Patricia, is that we add an accessory to existing x-ray units that is a semi-transparent filter. Thank you for showing the image that moves in real time based on where the physician needs to, what, depending on where the physician needs to see on the screen. So we're able to radically and dramatically reduce radiation, unnecessary radiation to both patient and medical staff using our device. So your filter is situated under the patient. That's correct. This, the filter is under the patient, right above the tube, the x-ray tube that uh, that hits the uh, the patient. I think you got to move it over just a fraction. Right there we go. Yeah, so the, right there where the x-ray tube sh- shoots through the patient, we retrofit and add our filters uh, to existing x-ray units, which is a bonus for administrators because you don't have to go out and buy a brand new x-ray unit or a brand new cath lab unit. We can retrofit your existing cath lab or your existing CR. So wow. your device is retrofitted on the machine right here. That's correct. So and that's- then let's talk about this. And that is a tablet, and a tablet is the, this is placed next to the patient where the physician is, and the physician can select on the tablet and basically draw a region of interest to move the filter in the right location. So basically, what you have is you have a a, 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 a tablet that is the input device, and then you have filters that move based on where the physician um, is is looking on on the patient. Now, Guillaume, I realize you deal with this every day, but to mere mortals like the Rico and I, and probably the general public, um, it's quite fascinating how the physician is able to select the region of interest, both with just his eyes, is it special glasses that he wears for the computer to sense where he's looking? Right. There are two types of input devices. One is an eye tracker, which is a, a, a a device that is actually next to the monitor, no no glasses are needed, or we use a tablet. So both are devices and input devices that are used to help move those filters. The device that we're using for the first system that we rolled out early, earlier this year is using a tablet. Okay. Okay. Well, that sounds a bit almost sci-fi. It almost feels like a Star Trek or something. It really does sound super futuristic. Right. right. I mean, you know, if I can wear those glasses and it follows where I want to put it, that's the ultimate thing, right? I mean, even augmented reality, I could see you probably even advancing it further where the information will be right on the glasses like that at some point. Eventually, there certainly eye tracker technology has has an unlimited amount of potential. And, you know, currently they're being deployed in actually laptops as a standard uh, feature. Certainly, the gaming world has helped advance oh, the the sure. amount of funding in the eye tracking technology, and yeah. we've basically taken an off the shelf eye tracking technology um, and are able to retrofit it with our device and use it as one of the input devices that we use. You know what I like about it is that you're dealing with an industry where the equipment is so expensive. And it's almost legacy in some ways, because even the operating systems and some of the old systems, uh, mm-hmm. they might be based on Windows, Windows 7 even, as far back mm-hmm. as that. Um, and you're giving them an option to just augment the existing equipment that they have. Which yeah, that, is, that is a key point, and our ability to retrofit existing x-ray units is important. A cath lab, which is used for the procedure I was describing earlier to help deploy stents, can be a million dollars or more. Right. So if you wanted this feature to radi- dramatically reduce your risk of all these adverse events that I talked about, um, admit- an administrator or a hospital may have a really tough time uh, looking for capital to acquire another cath lab. It could cost a million dollars. But sure. if you're able to retrofit your existing your existing C-arm, then that is a, uh, a massive benefit. So that is a, definitely a key feature. 
So the the type of customers that you're looking at are major hospitals, small urgent clinics, or where is your sweet spot as far as customer and industries? All the above. So okay. there are there are tw- more than twenty thousand mobile C arms in the U.S. And those are used in hospitals for surgeries, spine, trauma. They're used uh, by cardiologists. They're also used by pain management facilities in outpatient facilities. They're also used in ASCs, ambulatory surgical centers. Uh, So these mobile C-arms are deployed all over the place in outpatient facilities and in hospitals. So anybody who who is using x-ray to look inside the body without cutting it open, essentially, um, is is a uh, could potentially benefit from a technology. Now, to be clear, go ahead. No, uh, go ahead. To be clear, what? to be clear, this this is for fluoroscopic systems, for the arms. This is not for dental equipment or plain X-ray. If I broke my arm and I go to an urgent care center where you're taking one single exposure, the, the the medical staff is not in the room during that exposure, and the patient gets a very low amount of X-ray a single time. This is for continuous X-ray in deployment of, uh, of, let's say, stents or, let's say, in a pain management facility. So, Guillaume, we're looking at um, physicians like urologists, cardiologists. Um, who else might deploy? Interventional radiologists, cardiologists, spine surgeons, pain management, gastroenterologists, pulmonologists that are using scopes to take biopsies inside the lung. Um, I think you mentioned urologists, vascular surgeons. Uh, there's a quite a bit, there's seven to eight specialties that use mobile C arms or, or fixed cath labs to uh, to see inside the body to deploy devices. You know, I've found that a lot of the um, hospitals, like Northside Hospital and a lot of these major, larger facilities companies, are buying up smaller places. They're mm-hmm. setting up outreach satellite offices, essentially almost like um, contractor based, where mm-hmm. they bring in the specialists into they, they build the hub, provide all the machinery, and then the specialists come, they rent space, essentially, is what they're doing. Is that a good, I mean, how are you seeing that industry responding to what you want to do, what you're providing? Yeah, that's that's definitely, uh, the consolidation in the healthcare system is certainly something that's happening. Um, as you get more buying power uh, as a hospital and you acquire your competitors, let's say I'm an ambulatory uh, an ASC, an ambulatory surgical center, or I have my own outpatient facility as a physician, but I'm not part of the hospital. Certainly consolidation is a trend in, in, in many markets. Um, there's pros and cons to con- consolidation. Uh, hospitals tend to have more buying power. Um, I'm, I'm, a big, I'm a big fan of, of competition, but at the same time, consolidation can help provide better care. Um, so there's, there's pros and cons to those models. Uh, it's not going to really impact us, our business, but certainly, um, certainly a trend is, is uh, that's a true trend that we're seeing uh, nationwide. Okay. You have two other products coming out. You, you mentioned that before we got on. Are they things you could talk about? Yeah. So the, the, the first device has been FDA cleared and we're currently selling today. And that's retrofitting mobile C-arms. Mobile C-arms are smaller C-arms that are used by all those specialties that I talked about. The next device that we will be uh, releasing in the second half, we're in the prepara- we're pre- we're preparing our 510K uh, submission is for fixed C-arms or cath labs. So it's the same device, it's just on, an, on a separate market within the, uh, the healthcare space. Okay. Do you- Young, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, let's talk about Alara. Mm-hmm. It's the FDA spouse guiding principle of radiation safety. So Alara stands for as low as reasonably achievable. And Alara, the objective of Alara is any amount of X-ray um, is considered uh, not good. Mm-hmm. So if you can get it as low as you can, while not impacting the ability of the physician to provide the care that he or she needs to provide, then that is a, that is a good place to be. So the key, di- the key component of our device is that we're able to reduce radiation without impacting image quality, negatively impacting image quality. Historically, a lot of people have struggled at reducing the radiation exposure to physician and medical staff, but it has come at a cost. 
And that cost typically has been lower image quality. And when you lower image quality, you, you lower the, you lower the uh, opportunity of providing the best possible care you can. So LARA is that principle that the FDA and many other uh, societies follow, which is let's get x-ray radiation exposure as low as we can without impacting uh, outcomes. And let's talk about control rad and how far they are able to reduce that level of radiation exposure. So in our our F, in our FDA um, submission, we we reduce anywhere between fifty to eighty nine percent the radiation exposure to both patient and the entire medical staff inside the room. That is considered game changing. That uh, is absolutely game changing. Yeah, That's especially when you, when you don't negatively impact image quality. You talked to us earlier about some of the negative repercussions from the physicians who are continuously bombarded with this scatter mm -hmm. radiation. And you mentioned brain tumors. On which side of the head were they more likely to? Left, left-sided brain tumors. So they have two times incremental risk of brain cancer uh, compared to other medical professionals. And they have increasing incidence in left brain. Why is left brain relevant? The, when, the, when the physician is at the patient, they're on the left they're on the left side of the patient and it's their left side of the brain that is closest to the x-ray tube. So there's a direct correlation with exposure from the x-ray tube to brain tumors. So that, that is why the left brain tumor is, uh, is uh, very um, meaningful. And the last time I had spoken to you at your office, when it was still safe to be side by side and have an actual conversation with someone in person, um, you did mention there was at least one study out that indicated that your image quality was not only not affected adversely, but improved right. for the physician that was testing the product. Have you had any other such tests or results from other physicians? That's right. So we, we in, our, in our first installations at the beginning of the year, the feedback has been, well, not only are you not negatively impacting image quality, but your image quality has actually gone up. We've actually improved image quality. And we thought this was going to be the case from bench testing, lab testing that we had done, but we didn't really appreciate how clinically meaningful it was. And the feedback from this physician was, you have improved image quality to the point that you're able to reduce the operating time. Because if I can see what I need to see better and faster, then I can actually reduce my operating time. If you can reduce operating time and time uh, where you're sedated, the cost of the OR and the advantages to the patient are are, are, are very meaningful and very clinically important. So we were out to reduce radiation. And what we have found when we launched the technology is not only did we reduce radiation, but we actually clinically improved image quality. Um, that is not part of our FDA uh, label, but uh, in our, our, our FDA claims, but now we're going to be, we're going to, we're going to look to uh, further do additional testing to, uh, to be able to provide that claim if, uh, and, and investigate if we can get that claim from the FDA, but very important outcome from these initial installs. Absolutely. So do you have, um, you have several clients that you've been selling to. Can you talk of any case studies right now, Guillaume, of successes that you'd like to mention? Yeah, so we have uh, installations in, uh, in, a surgical, in surgical fields. We also have it in outpatient facilities by pain management, in a pain management field. Right. Um, and the utilization and the reductions in radiation that we're seeing are are, are matching what we claim we were able to do. And, um, and we're very pleased with that. And we're getting additional outcomes like Patricia, Patricia just uh, uh, pointed out regarding image quality. So we're very pleased with the outcomes, both in being able to deliver uh, very high radiation reduction and, and provide better image quality. Do you have, um, what, what are you looking forward to? What, what developments are you beyond, beyond the two products you're working on? Do you, you know, long range, do you have long range uh, plans that we'd like to be doing in this field as well? Yeah, so in in the next iterations, we'll be looking at the further developing for other types of C-arms. So there's a whole host of different types of, of C-arms and X-ray equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've launched it with a mobile C-arm, uh, a GE mobile C-arm. We're going to be doing it with a, a, 
Uh, our fixed CRM cath lab, at the, at the risk of providing too much information, is going to be on a fixed CRM with a, a, a Siemens, another vendor. Um, and we're in, the, in talks with all vendors and we're getting interest from a lot of different parties and, um, and are looking to collaborate more with some of these CRM OEMs to, uh, to further expand the reach of our technology. How long have you guys been in business, actually? Well, we've, we've, the technology was originally launched uh, uh, in 2010 um, by three Israelis. Our research and development center is in Israel. Our, our global headquarters are here in Peachtree Corners. And um, uh, so we went through a, a very long period of development, which is very typical for medical devices. The, the ramp up in technology, uh, our, uh, research and development of medical devices can last decades. Um, and we are now just getting our 510K clearance, as I shared last year, and, and now in the midst of a commercial launch. So we've gone through a very long period of development, and now we're at this very exciting period in our, in our company where we're now launching the technology and seeing the fruits of all our, our labor you know, really taking hold this year, which is really exciting. And, um, and fortunate for us, um, we, we raised a, uh, uh, our last capital round with a, with a VC uh, in the fourth quarter of last year. So we're actually well capitalized. I certainly wouldn't want to be doing that fundraising now. It was <laughs> behind us in, in the fourth quarter. And, um, and we're well capitalized to, um, you know, to move the company forward and, and fuel the commercial launch. Guillaume, your headquarters here in Peachtree Corners is rather new. Talk mm -hmm. to us about why your company shifted from, was it Pennsylvania? Yep, Pennsylvania. Why Peachtree Corners, Georgia? So originally, um, the, our research and development center is still in Tel Aviv, and our global headquarters prior was in Radnor, Pennsylvania, which is right outside of Philly. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I was working actually for a company called Monakea Technologies, which is a French uh, medical device company based out of Paris, but the U.S. headquarters uh, was here actually in Atlanta as well, uh, in Duluth. And uh, so I was already here in Atlanta. So when uh, I joined the company as the CEO, um, we, we moved the headquarters from Radnor, Pennsylvania, down here uh, to Atlanta. Um, I had found that, you know, when you, when you peel back the onion here in Atlanta, you'd be surprised at how much medical device talent you actually have here in our own backyard. Yeah. It certainly doesn't match what you have in Boston or in San Francisco, but you'd be surprised on how many the, the medical device talent there is here. Uh, the cost of living doesn't compare to what it looks like in Philly. Uh, the weather doesn't. You've got the Atlanta airport that's, uh, that, you know, for a lot of, for a guy that does a lot of global travel, uh, is very convenient. Um, so we, we found Peachtree Corners in particular very well centered, right north of Atlanta. Access to 141 is very useful. Uh, 141 might as well be an, inter, in a, uh, an interstate. I can be at the airport in 35 minutes, 40 minutes if there's no traffic, of course. But I plan around traffic, so uh, so that's okay. And um, you know, we have people that work here in the office that live inside their perimeter, that live north of us, that live west of us, that live east of us. And uh, we find ourselves actually pretty well centralized here. And certainly, the the cost of labor, and in this building that I'm here in Scientific Park, and um, it's, uh, it's fantastic uh, compared to let's say even inside the perimeter, but certainly a lot cheaper than in Philly. Sure. Well. Certainly glad you decided to settle here. Yeah, that's right. And in and the, in this time of COVID nineteen, Philly's not the place to be. Certainly, that's right. It's, it's right. tough. Uh, Let's talk about that a little bit. I don't mean to be a Debbie Downer, but it's happening and it's among us. And yep. it yeah, really stopped human activity across the globe. So how yeah. if in any way has COVID nineteen affected Control Rad? Yeah, certainly COVID nineteen is gonna has impacted everybody. Um, I mean, our premise is pretty simple. We see the light at the end of the tunnel. This too will pass. And um, we just have to get through this period of time. Who knows what that period of time looks like? Um, but we have to get through this time and be as productive as we can during these times. We have found that for us as a company, we're very fortunate because we're just launching our technology. So we had nominal cash uh, predict uh, forecasted for this year. So our burn rate and our, and our runway is really not impacted by COVID-19. Our team in Israel and our team here in Atlanta are working very effectively remotely. Um, we're able to come into the office that I am today to do conduct testing on our on our X-ray equipment that's here in in the office, uh, so we can um, you know very carefully and and with with uh, very few people um, conduct what we need to conduct. 
are we at 100% productivity? No, but uh, we're doing extremely well and, and, and find it to, and have found, frankly, um, and are building up habits of things that we weren't doing prior that we probably will keep on doing. Um, are there meetings that I would typically have gone to that I, I didn't really need to go to? Probably. <laughs> um, are there, you know, we're, com- we're conducting all company meetings with a team in Israel, um, having a chance for team members to meet each other that probably wouldn't have had a chance to meet. Probably should have been doing that before. Uh, so there's habits that we're actually building up that we that we uh, that we're probably going to be building up even once we get out of here. So we have found um uh, to just to, to stay pretty productive and, and are pleased with uh, how we're performing. Very good. Good to hear. It's a, it's a, it is a tough environment. I deal with a lot of different companies and um, the sales staff, just mm-hmm. reaching out to people. There's no landline to call anymore. You have to have someone's cell phone essentially or an email. Right. So it's a little bit more difficult than doing sales like that to a degree. Um, are there other things that you'd like to share, Guillaume, that, uh, about the company that we haven't covered yet? No, I mean, listen, we're excited to be here. I'm, I'm very thankful to be on this uh, podcast and and, uh, uh, and be part of this community. There's a lot going on here. Where I'm sitting across here from Atlanta Tech Park, which is where we were before we were in this building. Right. Um, it's, it's exciting to see all the investment and energy in this place. Um, I, I'm, uh, I'm amazed at all the construction that's going on just north of us and certainly give us a lot of uh, different lunch opportunities. So it's uh, yep. it's great to see the investment and the excitement here. My kids go to Wesleyan across the street. So um, it's excited. Uh, it's excited to be part of this community. And thanks for having me on. Yeah, no, this was good. And I, I appreciate that there were several people, at least uh, Robin Benfey from Atlanta Tech Park, I believe, and Nashley Young that recommended your company to yep. be part of this uh, profile that we did in the last issue. So I'm yep. um, glad they were able to speak up about about you and, and your company. Great. So, and, and you're right, there's so much going on. I mean, Atlanta Tech Park with the one and a half mile Curiosity Lab track. I mean, some of the stuff is just like your technology because of what's going on now, there's going to be even a bigger appeal for some of this stuff, right? We were talking a little bit before earlier about the safety of medical staff. Mm-hmm. It's a big deal now, uh, you know, not having the N95 masks, mm-hmm. all the you know, protect, uh, protection uh, equipment. This falls in line with that, right? We're keeping staff safe. Absolutely. I mean, frankly, um, we, we believe the sensitivity to yeah. our technology coming out of this thing is going to be higher than it was before. Not yeah. that people didn't care, but medical staff and, and these risks that I talked about were very well documented and, and, and known. But certainly coming out of, of COVID-19, there's going to be even higher sensitivity to protecting the medical staff. So we definitely believe that uh, um, we that, that will benefit us. Truly innovative, truly remarkable, and absolutely touching that yeah. you're protecting the people who are saving lives every day. Yes, absolutely. All right. Well, we appreciate you coming on the show with us. Um, for those that want to read the full article, you will find the digital edition on livinginpeacerecorners.com. Um, go to our digital page and you'll find that issue, the February, March issue that was held up by, uh, where are we, this way? This way, I guess. Residents may still have their coffee laying around their home somewhere and you yes. can read all about Control Rad and four other very innovative companies in Peachtree Corners yes. in the story. And we'll be posting it to the website shortly also. Um, so that we'll have the series of articles online. But Guillaume, I appreciate you coming out and, and well, coming out safely, socially safe online. All right. Know, this is not Zoom, but it's close, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right, thanks, so, guys. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye.